Hello, my name is Fergus Imri and I'm a postdoc in the Van der Schaal lab. I'm delighted to introduce Autoprognosis 2.0, democratizing diagnostic and prognostic modeling in healthcare with automated machine learning. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate Autoprognosis 2.0 and how it can be used. To start with, I'm going to explain what Autoprognosis 2 is. And it's our lab's latest tool for clinical modeling, able to handle classification, regression, and time to event or survival analysis. The capabilities of autoprognosis can be grouped into two main components. First, using automated machine learning, autoprognosis imputes missing data and optimizes machine learning pipelines, determining not only which models are most appropriate for a given data set, but also tuning hyperparameters. Autoprognosis then constructs a final predictive model as an ensemble of the best performing pipelines. Crucially, autoprognosis does more than just develop optimized models, but also allows investigation of the derived models and allows models to be readily shared in an accessible format. Now let's get into the demonstration of autoprognosis too. Now for the demonstration. For this demonstration, we're going to follow a tutorial that is provided in the GitHub repo, should you want to try it out yourself. We're going to begin by installing autoprognosis. You can do this locally on a server of your choice, or alternatively, as I'm going to do today, demonstrate the use of autoprognosis online using Google Colab. Once autoprognosis is installed, we'll begin by importing some necessary packages and functions that we'll use later. Next, we're going to load in our data set. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to use the Breast Cancer Wisconsin data set from the UCI Machine Learning Repository. Um, however, Autoprognosis can handle any data set that you want that can be imported as a pandas data frame. And this includes data that has been pre-processed using R or Starter or another statistical um, program. Now that our data is loaded, we can see that this data set consists of 569 examples and 30 features which describe the cell images of the breast cancer data sets um, that we're using. We're now going to move on and run a study with autoprognosis. So there are a number of possible classification algorithms in autoprognosis, 23 in total, and you can see them listed here. But for the purposes of today's study, we're only going to use four different classification algorithms, logistic regression, perceptron, XGBoost, and decision trees. In addition, while autoprognosis can perform imputation, the data set we've chosen is complete, so imputation is not necessary. Let us now run our study. Now that our study's been completed, let's check out what it's found. So let's load in the optimal pipeline. And, and as we can see, our ultimate pipeline is a, is a weighted combination of three of the models, consisting of around 18% the logistic regression model, 36% the perceptron, and 45% XGBoost. Now let's use autoprognosis to evaluate our performance. As you can see, on this data set, autoprognosis achieved very strong performance with an area under the receiver operating curve exceeding 0.99. Crucially though, autoprognosis enables us to do more than just develop computational pipelines, but also to understand and debug these models. Here, I'm gonna use the kernel SHAP explainer in order to understand the most important predictive features of this model. We can now see what were the most important features according to the kernel SHAP explainer for, for our predictor de derived with autoprognosis. We can see the mean perimeter feature is deemed the most important feature according to kernel shape. However, this isn't the only explainability method available. For example, we can also understand um, feature importance using the effect size. And we can see here that there are some similar features ranked the most important, but they're not quite identical, illustrating the difference um, in results between different explainers. Finally, in this tutorial, I'd like to show how autoprognosis can be used to assess the value of information. Often in clinical practice, models should use as few features as possible. And here we use the, the effect size explainer 
to select different subsets of features and assess the performance of our pipeline using only those features. So interestingly, we can see when only using 25 of the 30 features, actually the performance is the same, if not slightly better than using all the features. As, this, as the risk effect size increases, we naturally select fewer features, but with just 16 of the total 30 features, are the performance is identical um, to the performance using all of the features. As we use fewer and fewer features, we can see naturally that the performance drops off slightly, but even using just nine features, we still exhibit very strong performance. This now concludes the tutorial part of this video, but if you want to know, if you want to find out more, there's several helpful resources that I can point you to that are included in the notebook. To briefly highlight these resources. First, we've, we've produced a dedicated website for Autoprognosis 2.0, which acts as a centralized hub for all things Autoprognosis. Secondly, you can find all code for Autoprognosis on GitHub, where we've included a number of tutorials in addition to the one um, I've demonstrated today. And finally, if you'd like to read more about Autoprognosis 2 and how our framework works, including an illustrative example using UK Biobank, check out our paper. Thank you very much.